Elon Musk is everything that's wrong with Silicon Valley wrapped up into one fucking giant ball of like annoying nine gag memes, okay? Let's let's do it. Let's uh let's let's watch this video and then we'll get to some other stuff. But while Elon is like popping off, to do the right thing. Impossible. Have a fan base. I've, I've never signed a, a, a life size version of it. First, I want to say I love you. A 2021 poll showed Musk with a 50% approval rating, way higher than his fellow billionaires. This How? popularity has done very. How? Dear, thank you very much for sharing a little of your valuable time. And meet Rubius. Greetings from Sane. Says fan the Rubius Corp. No, it was dope. Rubius is dope. Very well for him. Musk is now the seventh richest man in the world. Musk is now the fourth richest man in the world. Elon Musk is now the world's richest person again, according to Forbes. We took a deep look into Musk's entire career. Court documents, SEC filings, and inter- Like, why? Why can't fucking people hate him like they hate Bill Gates? You know what I mean? I mean, fuck Bill Gates, too, obviously. Don't get me wrong. Make no mistake, motherfuckers. Like, absolutely motherfuck Bill Gates, okay? He sucks. But, like, why can't people hate Elon Musk in a similar capacity? Why can't they just, like, think that he's, like, microchipping everybody or some shit? I do know why. It's because he is so good at being a fucking comment. He, like, he is good at marketing himself, and that's it. Musk has fallen short on almost every promise he's made, and his only real successes have happened because of public funding and partnerships and bailouts. Yeah. Interviews ...to break down the story Elon tells about himself and how he leveraged it to accumulate wealth and power. This is The Classroom from More Perfect Union, and today we're going to look at how Elon Musk got rich. Let's skip Musk's South Africa childhood. Critics say he inherited his money from his father's emerald mine, and Elon says that's not true. He claims he rejected his abusive father's ill-begotten wealth and came to North America as a teen with $2,000 to put himself through college. He knew he wanted to work with the internet. The only way to get involved with the internet in 95 that I could think of was to start a company. Because uh, they want a lot of companies to go and work for. So I thought, well, we've got to make something that's going to return money very, very quickly. Elon joined forces and funds with his brother Kimball. They drummed up some cash from investors. Uh oh. Early Kimball mention. Gonna post that. 2K for college, I wish. Yeah, no. Uh, Kimball, uh, famously uh, friends with Jeffrey Epstein Kimball. Like, very good friends with Jeffrey Epstein Kimball. That's the. That's just who Kimball is. All right, let's keep going. Including 20K from their father and started Zip2, a map and local listing company. Zip2 eventually planned to merge with City Search, but Elon wouldn't have been in charge. That did not sit well with him. At the time, a City Search executive said City Search wanted to focus on customers and financiers, while Musk wanted to focus on general visibility. Visibility for him. I'd like to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. That'd be cool. These disagreements led to the deal falling apart. This is a pattern for Elon, a need for sole credit and control. It's a huge part of his story. Zip2 sold, and Elon made 22. By the way, what he did with Zip2 is something that he did literally throughout his entire fucking career. When I studied engineering, everyone in my class used to suck him off all the time, but now even the hardcore engineering nerds that I know have started to dislike him. Elon Musk is everything that's wrong with Silicon Valley wrapped up into one fucking giant ball of like annoying nine gag memes, okay? Like, if you're an engineer, how the fuck do you respect a guy who literally doesn't do engineering? The only patent that Elon Musk has is the fucking, the, the, the thing that you put at the tip of your, your charger. That's it. Like, he didn't design shit. He didn't do anything. He's not an engineer. Barely got some fucking comp sci uh, skills. Yeah, all he does is literally enslave engineers and then you know, ride the wave, ride their fucking accomplishments. Engineers want to make shit. I know that because I live with one, right? They just want to make shit. They don't give a fuck. They're like, I don't care how, I don't care where, I just want to make shit. I want to build stuff. I love building shit, okay? He's an innovator. No, he is not, dude. What? He's not an innovator at all. He hasn't innovated anything. That's a lie. Anyway, Engineers want to build things, okay? Elon Musk is the furthest away from that. Like, he, he doesn't build shit. He just <laughs> exploits the engineers that build shit for him. $2 million, which he invested in his next project. 
I've sunk the great majority of, of my net worth into X.com, which is the new banking and mutual funds company. So this is an ATM. And what we're going to do is transform the traditional banking industry. That quote defines Musk's strategy, promise revolutionary technology, and highlight how he's risking his own money. And he also points out a key element of his success. Notice how that's no different than the Twitter thing as well, by the way. He does this all the time, and he gets investors. away with it all the time. Raising $50 million is a matter of making a series of phone calls. As X.com took shape, investors and the board didn't think Musk had the experience to be CEO. So they brought in Bill Harris. Elon's co-founders were also unhappy. One accused him of promising the sun, moon, and the stars to the media when there was nothing there. Future SEC filings for the company even mention a lack of proprietary technology as a corporate risk. The tech they did have was problematic. For example, there was a bug allowing bad actors to transfer funds from any account in the nation's banking system with just an account number. A major security flaw. A co-founder was so displeased with Musk, he left and took many employees with him. Musk's reaction? We'll hire more people. Eventually, Musk pushed out CEO Bill Harris and replaced him. With himself. To centralize authority. X.com merged with a competitor, Peter Thiel's Confinity. Confinity owned a piece of technology called PayPal. Musk and Thiel got glowing press coverage, but because PayPal came out of Confinity- Another psychotic villain, by the way, Peter Thiel, literally is like an evil villain in every meaningful capacity. I mean, this is a guy straight up, I, I don't know if he has a fucking lair, but I would not be surprised if he has one. Um, he has blood boys. He does blood transfusions from like young buxom lads. Um, I, I, most of those billionaires want to like try to figure out, you know, life extension though. They're, they're crazy about that. Um, he is, uh, also the, the founder of is it paradigm. What was the fucking company that he owns that like literally just does that does spy well, Palantir, not paradigm Palantir. Thank you. That does spyware for the federal government. That's it. It's like machine learning, uh, machine learning surveillance technology for the federal government, which by the way is straight up named after Lord of the Rings, like the eye of Sauron, the all seeing eye. So like, he's not even fucking hiding it. Like he's just straight up like, no, I'm, I'm a villain. I'm a bad guy. He's like, I'm a, I'm a villain. Anyway, let's continue. Infinity, a lot of the coverage centered Teal. According to Ashley Vance's 2015 biography, Musk kept championing the X.com brand while most everyone else favored PayPal. Eventually, the company scrapped X.com to focus on PayPal, a decision the press gave Musk credit. Yeah, immortality is something that, immortality is something that all of these people are 100% are interested in, for the record. Like, all billionaires want to live forever. Credit for. But mutiny was brewing. Executive Roloff Botha alleged Musk was hiding serious financial issues from the board. Employees put together a coup. They petitioned the board to fire Musk, and it worked. Musk was fired and replaced with Thiel. Botha said it was just in time. It would have killed the company if Elon had stayed on as Both CEO for nuts. six more months. Regardless, Musk hits it big when PayPal eventually sells, $180 million. He had been laying the path for his next move since college. When I was in college, there were three areas that I thought would most affect the future of humanity. The internet, uh, the transition to a sustainable energy and transportation uh, sector, and space exploration, in particular the extension of life to multiple planets. With the, the, the capital that I got from the sale of PayPal, um, I was able to go into both those, those areas. Enter. Damn, <laughs> you got two homies that have fucking whipped it out in places that they're not supposed to. Right here, talking to one another, you know what I mean? Shouts out to Charlie Rose. Okay. Pal, um, I was able to go into both those, those areas. Enter SpaceX and Tesla. Musk wasn't with Tesla at the start. Is space travel not important? Dude, I love space travel. Shut the fuck up. My brother's literally, my brother literally built satellites. Dude, sh shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I've always been fascinated with space travel. I am absolutely fascinated with space travel and I do love space. And I do think that space exploration is important. Okay. Shut the fuck up. Having said all of that. I do think that what Elon Musk is doing is not revolutionizing space travel. What Elon Musk is doing is taking government subsidies and privatizing uh, a, a, a branch of the government, basically, so he can continue funneling goodwill to his other company that is uh, directly tied to his assets, that is directly tied to his... Second, one, one moment. Sorry, my uh, delivery is here, but also I got samples coming in. Um, so I'm waiting on that. 
What was I talking about? I agree. 90% of the reusable landable lockers are pretty revolutionary for all future, but the 90%. Okay, dude, dude, dude. That is government subsidies. That is government, uh, that is government scientists. Okay. And that can still be absolutely handled by NASA. So ignore any good months, Musk man. contributes. Smart. So you can get a better dunk. He's not revolutionizing anything. He's bringing topics to the public consciousness like space and energy. Yeah, dude. No one else is talking about space and energy before Elon Musk. Do you understand how fucking stupid Elon Musk simps are? Look no further than this. Motherfuckers will be like, Elon Musk invented tunnels, space travel, and just renewable energy. Like, that's what I mean. It's all marketing and it works because there's enough stupid fucking people that will literally believe him. Yeah, I said he invented it, not causing people to talk about it. What? He's not revolutionizing anything. He's bringing topics to the public consciousness like space and energy. Bro, you think Elon Musk is the only person that's like talking about fucking renewable energy? Are you stupid? Yeah, I can't believe Elon Musk got people to talk about tunnels, dude. It's so sick. Elon Musk slams dick in car door. Musk fans, masterful gambit, sir. Straight up. He invested in a company that already existed, but most media calls him a founder. What happened? We spoke with Edward Niedermeyer, author of Ludicrous, an in-depth examination of Tesla Motors. Elon Musk was not one of the original founders of Tesla, right? There was these two guys, Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening, who had actually incorporated the company. Uh, Musk came in because he wanted to do the same thing. But like with his previous companies, Elon was focused on publicity, specifically public perception of himself as the visionary founder. Part and parcel of being a hot startup, right, is, is you have to have that sort of charismatic, visionary founder. But it wasn't Elon Musk, it was Martin Eberhardt. Eberhardt even had a BlackBerry ad where he's being presented just like Steve Jobs as this visionary tech guy. And I think that was exactly the kind of thing that, that Elon Musk really wanted out of Tesla um, as much as anything else. He sent an email saying, like, this is embarrassing, you know, I'm an important part of this company and I want to make sure that I'm included in the coverage. And, and in these emails that leaked, it, it makes it very clear that being that guy, being the, the visionary figurehead of this company was, was really, really important to him. So shortly after this this whole exchange and Musk getting really angry about his lack of prominence in the in the media coverage, he went and wrote the top secret master plan blog post. And this was really Musk's coming out party, positioning himself as really the that visionary founder for Tesla. One of the really interesting things is that, you know, there's really not a lot in the in the top secret master plan strategically anyway, that Tesla wasn't kind of already planning on doing. It all culminated in Eberhard's ouster and a series of lawsuits, leading to a settlement with an important stipulation. Musk could legally call himself a co-founder of the company. Musk knew that to acquire more power, he needed to be called co-founder on paper. Musk has long insisted he never wanted to be CEO of Tesla. But after Eberhard's ouster, they brought in you know, two different new CEOs before Musk himself eventually took over. Musk took over at a rough time, the 2008 financial crisis. Tesla needed an influx of capital. Musk's usual strategies wouldn't work. The sources of capital that would normally provide that, such as the public markets, the debt markets, they're in shambles. But a year earlier, Congress passed a $25 billion loan program for the Department of Energy, part of which would go to developing low emission cars. Musk went on a media blitz trying to convince the public that Tesla deserved the loan. It's helpful to let your congressman and senator know that you think companies like Tesla should get a portion of the a ATVM program. But public approval wouldn't be enough. At the time, Tesla only had 1,500 cars on the road and hadn't truly proven that they could produce cars en masse or significantly reduce emissions. Tesla was stuck in a catch-22. They needed to show they had the support of other corporate investors, specifically traditional automakers like Daimler, the makers of Mercedes and other cars, but Daimler wouldn't be interested in investing if they didn't get the loan. He'd announced that the loan was approved before Tesla had even submitted um, a, a complete application for the loan, let alone received any kind of actual approval for it. By saying that this was a done deal, that gave Daimler the confidence to, to partner with them. And having that partnership with a you know, century old, one of the biggest names in the car business, in turn gave the government the confidence in Tesla's viability to then ultimately give them the loan. And, and so it's this, it's this you know, circular trick that, that Elon plays. It was more than the money. It was a boost for public and investor relations. Just a few months later, Tesla registered for an IPO. Their SEC filing even admits the loan was essential to the business. 
In 2013, Tesla paid off the loan in full, to huge fanfare from the media. CNN literally just copied their press release. But Tesla still isn't profitable. Their stated goal is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. But Tesla's actual strategy is exploiting well-meaning government climate programs. Look at carbon credits, government permits to emit a certain quantity of greenhouse gases. Companies earn carbon credits for reducing emissions and have to spend them when they emit too much. Tesla earns a lot, then sells them to other companies, erasing whatever lost, progress lost, Tesla lost, made. Lost, lost, the boost lost. from selling carbon credits led to some of the only profitable quarters Tesla had ever had. Shut the fuck up about me being away from the fucking chair, okay? Suck my dick, I know. I had to, I had to do something um and also on top of that i have to pee still but we've also i've also covered this like a million times over the chair gets lonely no i had a i had a delivery and i had to i had to bring it inside what are carbon credits bro uh what elon here i mean they'll describe it regardless but uh carbon credits are basically uh other companies other car manufacturers paying Elon Musk to make electric vehicles so that they can say, hey, like there's an, there's an allocation of, of uh, you know, green energy electric vehicles that they literally just described it. Oh, okay. Well, let's run it again. Government then. permits to emit a certain quantity of greenhouse gases. Companies earn carbon credits for reducing emissions and have to spend them when they emit too much. Tesla earns a lot, then sells them to other companies, erasing whatever progress Tesla made. The boost from selling carbon yeah. credits led to some of the only profitable quarters Tesla had ever had. This is brilliant, by the way. This condenses uh, in a perfect way what the True Anon uh, podcast uh, that created some of my favorite episodes on Elon Musk uh, uh, covered over the course of like two like hour and 30 minute long episodes. Kind of like a tax write-off for these other companies. It's, uh... Other companies are basically paying Elon Musk uh, and Tesla to make electric vehicles, i.e. really not doing anything about pollution, just monetizing it. Exactly. It's unfortunate. I think Tesla is past the point of disappearing. Certainly not worth their valuation, though. Um, not necessarily. You can only keep up the act about uh, uh, self-driving cars for too long, right? And if they can't fucking figure out or it's piss chug, you can, you can while you're streaming. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go piss in a second. The reason why Tesla's valuation is so insane is not necessarily because it makes the most cars or anything or it's profitable or anything like that. Obviously not. Tesla does not have the same amount of factories as like any of the other competing car manufacturers. Uh, Tesla has originally taken advantage of the fact that like other car manufacturers haven't been making EVs or, or haven't been pushing out EVs as aggressively, right? However, uh, Tesla is not a car company. It's a tech company, okay? So its valuation is treated like a tech company. And tech companies get like 10x, 100x, okay? And basically, uh, for that reason, people are not paying Tesla because of like its uh, quarterly earnings. People are not valuing Tesla uh, or evaluating Tesla on its quarterly earnings or its profit margins or anything like that. Obviously, that still factors into the valuation, clearly. That's, you know, you have to do that. But... Um, but it's more so about like what the potential of Tesla is. However, Tesla isn't a tech company. In reality, it is a marketing company around Elon. Osako, you are correct. And the PE ratio around 4x the market. So ultimately though, it's not a tech company. Their own SEC filings say they're a car manufacturer. Oh shit, my bad, dude. I didn't realize if the SEC filing says they're a car manufacturer, then I guess they're be they're they're val they're they're evaluating uh, the the Tesla stock off of uh, it being a car manufacturer, and it totally makes sense that they're. That's so crazy! It's so weird that the car manufacturer is uh, is is what like one tenth the size of other car manufacturers, and yet uh, you know their stocks are ten x. They even used to list regulatory credits and automobile sales in the same line in some SEC filings. It allowed Tesla to announce better financials and pull in more investors, retail and institutional. Musk gets paid almost entirely in stock, and he's really good at manipulating the stock's value. He uses the same strategy he used with Daimler and the Department of Energy, Welcome back announcing to funding that might not exist. Like when he tweeted, am considering taking Tesla private. Look at that. Automotive companies market value in billions. Tesla is at $555 billion. Toyota is at 
196.61 billion. Do you understand? The amount of fucking, the amount of Toyotas that are out there, Tesla. like Toyota's productive capabilities is not even show. imaginable in comparison to a fucking car company that had to do a recall for like 50% of its fucking existing inventory literally last year, and the inventory itself wasn't even that fucking large. Stop talking of things you don't understand. Growth over dead industry. Okay, dude, you're... I know that you're going to lose the remaining fucking uh, allowance that you got from your parents before you bankrupt your entire fucking family lineage uh, the in the stock market because you think you're fucking right. brilliant anyway. So have fun with that, okay? Sure, straight up, have fun with that, dude. You're, you, you're a fucking... You're the wolf of Wall Street, brother. I have no rebuttal for you. Yes, you fucking destroyed me. Have fun going to the fucking moon, dog. Um. You're going to kill it. Toyota has no future. They're way behind on EVs. I know Toyota is like notoriously uh, bad on EVs. And I do agree that that is not good for a company like Toyota. But ultimately, that's not the point I'm making, Fango Lives. And you know this better than anyone else. You fucking literally write about EVs. So shut the fuck up. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The fact that like these gigantic fucking car manufacturers are not even valued at a fraction of fucking Tesla, despite their productive capabilities and their output across the board in comparison to a company like Tesla, shows that there is clearly a massive multiplier happening here with Tesla's valuation. And that valuation revolves around Tesla being treated as a tech company and not a car manufacturer. It's the idea, it's the gamble, it's the bet that Tesla is going to hit it big when the self-driving car thing happens, okay? That's what it is. It's speculation. The problems with electric cars isn't the electric, it's the car part. Tesla car sales compared to the big three in the United States. Yeah, I mean, there, there you go. I mean, that's the first half of 2017. It, that, that number hasn't changed too much, though. I mean, obviously, Tesla delivers more now, but... There's also an issue with... There's also an issue with, like, uh, working on the cars themselves. Like, there aren't, uh, in comparison to other cars, there aren't as many Teslas out on the street, so you don't get to hear these issues as much. Plus, there's an NDA you have to sign if you want to get your fucking car fixed. But the repair fact, yep, there it is. There it is. Uh, Biznaz is correct. The repair factor is a huge issue with Teslas. Anything breaks on a Tesla, even a bumper, and their solution is to buy a new Tesla. The way that they fucking built the frame on a Tesla is is literally like a, a fender bender tanks your car some of you motherfuckers who are uh elon musk simps are unironically behaving like uh unironically behaving like the the uh joe rogan clip Okay, dude. Okay, car sales, Tesla. Car sales 2021. Let's take a look at that because uh, these fucking idiots are not going to shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ, why are we doing this? And the only reason why Tesla sales are up 93%, this is just percentage increase, not like actual amount of cars you're selling. So if Tesla sold one car and then sold two cars, that's a fucking 100x, you know what I mean? Like, or not a 100x, that's just like doubled, right? That's just a percentage increase. This is a very sneaky way of making it seem as though Tesla's selling a lot more cars. But their vehicle delivery in comparison to the other vehicle uh, manufacturers is a fraction. It's fucking tiny. And a lot of you dummies are uh, behaving like Joe Rogan when he found out the truth about like, how much Ford fucking uh, uh, sells in comparison? Tesla sales are up 20x since 2017. Okay, but that doesn't mean anything. They're not even in the top fucking 10, dog. Where is Tesla? Where the fuck is Tesla? People are literally, I just described to you how people can lie about numbers this way and how, like, look, 
Toyota decreased their fucking sales. Do you think Toyota is not the 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 largest car manufacturer still? Look at that. Oh, well, this looks like Tesla's fucking killing it. And it looks like Toyota is getting fucking owned, dude. I'm too stupid to understand how this works. Hassle. Yeah, they're up infinity since 1960. <laughs> like, they didn't exist. Light vehicle sales in the United States between January and December of 2020 and 2021 by uh, manufacturers. At Where's Tesla? Center, Where's Tesla? Where's Tesla? Here on vacation. Oh, there it is. 22 months. Beating Will you shut the fuck up now, you dumb fucks? You stupid fucking idiots, dude. Huh? 93%? Okay, well, where's Tesla? Of course it's 93% increase in comparison to fucking Toyota. You fucking dumb bitches, dude. All you motherfuckers who act like you know. All you dumb motherfuckers. Act like you are so smart, and I am a fucking himbo, and uh, admittedly a dumbass, and even I can comprehend how this fuck, how, how to look at a goddamn graph, dude. Massage the numbers as hard as you want, but ultimately, Tesla doesn't sell as much as other companies, okay? And th this, this, this stock valuation, or its, its market value, is not associated with its fucking output. That does not make sense. Of course, the, there are fundamentals. Yeah, I had to click see more to see where the fuck, uh, uh, you know, Tesla is. So cranky today? Yes, because stupidity makes me very angry. And the Dunning-Kruger effect that uh, causes the dumbest people in the chat to fucking chime in, you know, in the most condescending capacity, destroys me. Tesla's out here getting fucking Noted. long dicked by Mazda, okay? And there's still simps in the fucking chat losing their mi uh, minds. Valuation is definitely high, but market always values growth companies more than stagnant ones. Yes, it's speculation, but that's what the market is, by the way. Not a Tesla investor, though I used to be. Yeah, I know. I know that the market uh, values growth companies. I understand that. But the valuation is still insanely high. And that gamble is going to fall apart inevitably. Especially when other companies start Seven making affordable, right sexy, sleek EVs that don't fucking light on fire, as a matter of fact. 420. Funding secured. You can't just do that. Chatter is right. It's better to do nothing at all about climate issues. Bro, fucking converting our entire fleet of vehicles to electric vehicles is not going to fucking solve climate change. Okay? It'll, it, 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 it'll barely put a fucking dent in it. Are you out of your mind? EVs are not the fucking uh, future for renewable energy. The real future for renewable energy is trains, okay? It's trains, motherfucker. That's what it is. High-speed rail. Stop. Stop playing with me. Buses, trains. A federal judge determined Elon... But yes, EVs will help as well. ...tweet had falsely inflated Tesla stock and caused billions in damages. The COVID pandemic also helped Musk. When the Federal Reserve executed recession-stalling fixes on Wall Street, bankers invested in Tesla. Despite Musk's derision of COVID stimulus checks, Tesla received stimulus money from the government. At the beginning of the pandemic, Tesla stock hovered around $120 a share. In late 2021, a year and a half into COVID, it was worth 10 times that, all of which greatly increased the net worth of the top shareholder, Elon. But to maintain the world-saving myth, he has to look like he doesn't make any money. My cash balances are, are very, very low. I, I simply had loans against my, my stock, so I, I, I if, if Tesla... You want people to give up private, comfortable transport? I know that trains are smart, but dude, comfort is driving force of humanity. Yeah, spoken like a fucking pathetic little uh, car head, dude. Never experienced the, the luxurious... Ex you've never experienced the luxuries of train travel, okay? That's it. That's it. What do you mean, your comfort? You know how fucking... You know how comfortable train travel is? I prefer it to fucking... Planes, dog. What are you talking about? 
And it also reduces traffic. God, I fucking hate the car brain dickheads, dude. I swear to God, Amera brain is such a fucking disease. It's like such a legitimate disease. Dude, you are never, ever going to be able to fucking convince me on this. You know why? I just came back from Amsterdam. I saw it. I saw it. Like Ann Whittacombe going to fucking Norway to look at the Norwegian prison system. I saw it with my own two fucking eyes. It works. It literally works. And it works in ways that you can't even fucking imagine. Okay? The wonders. It, the, the future that is possible. I saw it. I experienced it. I touched the trams. I sat in them. You're out of your fucking mind. Oh, the personal comfort. What the fuck do you mean? Walkable cities. Okay? Cutting off access to vehicles inside of, like, really dense urban areas. Making it unaffordable and insane to own a fucking vehicle. I saw what it looks like to have, like, above-ground rail, a metro system, a grid that actually fucking works, and is on goddamn time. You're talking about personal comfort. I live in the worst car city in the fucking country, okay? Well, maybe not the worst, but one of the fucking worst. And let me tell you, it sucks. I would light my Porsche on fucking fire and throw it into the goddamn ocean if it meant that for that sacrifice, we could have affordable and reasonable public transit, okay? Free public transit, maybe, in the future as well. But just like an actual fucking working viable grid. Yeah, same energy as just turn on the AC yesterday. Exactly. You do not know how well and how efficient a city can fucking run because that imagination has been robbed from you. It's been hammered into your fucking brain. The American hyper-individuality has broken your fucking brain. You cannot see a world where there's adequate public transit. Trigger warning? Oh my god. What the fuck? I know Tesla's announcing its quarterly earnings in a few minutes. I know. That's why I've been fucking talking about Tesla this morning. I know. Cars are not the way. I mean, here, this is friend of the show, Alan Fisher's funny uh, TikTok. I swear, bro, just let me build one more lane. I swear we're going to fix This is what some of you fucking car heads sound like. Traffic. Just build, let's build one more lane. Just let me build one more lane. Just let me build one more lane. I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear we're going to fix traffic. Just, just one more lane and just make it bigger. Just make it bigger. We're going to fix traffic. It's going to fix traffic. It's going to fix traffic. By the way, it doesn't fix traffic. That's the, that's the joke for the record. For those of you who don't know, none of this actually demonstrably does not fix traffic. Like, there is so much empirical evidence to show that, like, adding more lanes to a highway doesn't actually fucking defeat traffic congestion. Traffic is going to fix traffic. Do you know what would fix traffic? Trains. It makes me want to cry, dude. Thinking about, like, thinking about, like, uh, the Netherlands and thinking about Amsterdam. It makes me blind with rage. Imagining a future that is possible in the United States of America and seeing how fucking sick that shit is and how awesome that is, how luxurious that shit is, by the way, how luxurious it is. But no, all we get, all we fucking get is like, the dumbass Tesla guy being like, oh, I'm going to invent something new. It's called a tunnel that's a one-way tunnel that you can only fucking uh, be inside of with a, uh, one of my cars. It's crazy how the solution was made in 1804 and we refused to utilize it. Of course, of course we refused to utilize it. Wait, hold on. Uh, I'm going to finish off this thing real quick. Thank you, speech over the five. Get the subs. Most U.S. companies don't allow their executives to take out loans against their stock. But Tesla does. And Musk has taken advantage, borrowing millions of dollars for his personal coffers, using his Tesla stock as collateral. Loans don't count as income in the eyes of the IRS or the public. But even without the loans, in 2021, Musk made 18,043 times the average the Tesla employee. Castle. Tesla justifies that wild ratio to investors in SEC filings by arguing Elon's worth it. Elon Musk has contributed significantly and actively to us since our earliest days, raising capital, bringing investors, and raising public awareness. 
Yeah, Tesla's own SEC filings admit that the myth of Elon is inherently tied to the value of the company. If people stop believing in Elon, Tesla loses value, and Elon knows that. He even admits much of Tesla's value is based on a promise. The overwhelming focus is, is solving full self-driving. That's really the difference between Tesla uh, being worth a lot of money and being worth basically zero. But full Big on bikes. I like bikes, but public transportation is not just bikes. Not to give a shout out to not just bikes, but you know, public transportation is, is incredibly important. I'm not just like a big bike head, you know what I mean? Ace Vitrius, thank you for the five gifted subs. The US literally had the largest rail network in the world and tore down train tracks for the car and gas industry, lobbied interstates uh, that also served as races and machines through redlining. 100% true. Just wait till you visit Japan. Shit isn't in English and it's the easiest, fastest, best experience with the world with no cars would be like. I mean, dude, I saw it in Amsterdam. I saw it in Amsterdam. I think it's the closest. Like, it's not like England. Uh, like, the UK is great, but nothing i mean amsterdam is a is a different planet dude it's hard not to be a dutchaboo after fucking experiencing the wonders of of uh public transit and walkable cities you know kind of like experiencing the top of the hour ad break without having a subscription you know it's not great you're gonna see an ad because it's coming right now but if you no longer want to see those ads, if you want an uninterrupted broadcasting experience, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Here's the one minute ad break now. Also, Speecha with another 10, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. Thank you, Speecha. And Ace Vitrius with another five. That's another way you can avoid it if you get lucky. Here's the one minute ad break now. Self-driving has yet to be safely implemented, and the latest data suggests it's incredibly unsafe. Tesla's system is nowhere near ready. Regardless, Musk is still wildly wealthy from the promises he's made, and that's also made him very powerful. Elon says his goal is... We want to maximize happiness of the population and propagate into the future as far as possible. But he's really using that wealth and power as all billionaires do. Not to save humanity, but to crush it. He squashes worker power. They fired me because I tried to improve the lives of my co-workers and myself. That's why they fired me. It wasn't a part of Elon's plan. And now that he has both power and a soapbox, his dangerous anti-government political beliefs are even more important. Previously, Elon was a liberal darling. Obama's 2015 State of the Union seemed to be written for Musk. Solar power, Tesla. Re-energized space program, astronauts to Mars. But as soon as Democrats questioned Musk, he changed, lashing out and announcing support for far-right figures and ideas. He likes the politicians willing to support his myth and let him continue building wealth at the expense of the rest of us. He isn't the only billionaire doing this, but his skill at myth building and his massive popularity make him the most dangerous. Musk tells a story of a self-made billionaire using his money to save the world and enrich humanity, but he really built his wealth on the backs of others to enrich himself. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll be covering the stories of other billionaires and multimillionaires to examine by the way, um, the reason why I was like constantly yeah. running back and forth is because my samples came. I 100% agree with you, but you sound unusually annoying when you defend public transit because you repeat ad verbatim trains YouTuber talking points. What? Train memes are tiring. Pablito El Muchacho. What are you? I don't even fucking watch train YouTubers. But... I would assume, I would suspect. Truth when said a lot equals meme and cringe. <laughs> it's annoying when you say the correct arguments. I don't watch train YouTubers, but uh, if they're fucking saying the things I'm saying, then they're right. So why are you fucking annoyed by that, you dumb bitch? Paco Witos, thank you for the five get the subs, by the way. Dude, the commuter rail near me breaks down almost twice a week. I look up MBTA, shit sucks.